Good day, grade nine learners, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. You are tuned into your first lesson of term two EMS, and today we'll be focusing on the concept of debtors. My name is Ngosnati Koki, and this is my Tuma Mina Teaching. Before we can understand what debtors are, we must first understand credit sales and credit transactions. I'm sure you all know what cash sales are already, so I'll give you a few seconds just to think about it a bit, and we'll get back to it. What is cash sales? All right, let's see if you got the correct answer. Cash sales are when customers buy goods and pay immediately for them. Now, credit sales are opposite. It is when a customer buys goods but pays for them at a later stage. Now that you know what credit sales are, you should also know what a credit transaction is. It's a transaction involving the exchange of goods or services without an immediate exchange of cash. Payment is therefore postponed. So what is a debtor then? When a business sells its goods or services on credit to someone else or to a customer, that person, business or customer is known as a debtor. In other words, a debtor is someone that owes your business money. In South Africa, we have very strict laws regarding credit transactions. The National Credit Act, Act 34 of 2005, was created to protect both the consumers and businesses and became fully operational in South Africa on 1st June 2007. Let's look at the purpose of the National Credit Act. Number one, it's to educate consumers on the responsibilities of borrowing money. Number two, ensure that money that is borrowed or lent out can be paid back. Number three, to protect consumers who are unfairly treated by. And lastly, to provide debt counseling processes to consumers who cannot find a solution to repay their debts. We will also be looking at the main objectives of the National Credit Act. Firstly, it aims to help credit providers to be responsible when granting credit. Secondly, to help consumers not to commit to more than what they can afford. And lastly, educating consumers to make informed choices. What can the National Credit Act do for you? So credit can be good for you because it gives you that extra edge to buy the things that you need that are out of your reach. The problem, however, comes in when debt spirals out of control. So the trick is manage your finances. Only borrow what you can afford. All right, learners, let's look at credit worthiness. Before a business can grant a person to buy on credit, they must first see if the person is credit worthy. In other words, if they are able to pay off their debt. To do this, they must look at the person's credit records in other words, they have to look at how the person paid off their previous debts. All right, grade nine learners. So if you're buying something on credit, make sure that you pay back that money on time to ensure you maintain your good credit record. If the business is satisfied, the business and the person will go into an agreement. Such an agreement between the business and the persons specifies the following. Firstly, the credit limit the maximum amount the debtor can owe on a specific date. Secondly, the payments terms or credit period. How long can the debtor pay his or her account? Thirdly, incentives or rewards. If the debtor pays off their debt on time, the business can give them rewards or incentives. So it's very beneficial to pay back in time. Lastly, penalties. The debtor will be charged interest for any late payments on his or her account. We will be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of credit for the business and the client. So let's start with the business. Now let's look at the advantages and the disadvantages. Advantages of credit for the business. Number one, the business attracts more clients. Not everyone has cash readily available to pay for goods. Number two, 
the business can ask more for goods to cover administrative costs. Disadvantages of credit for the business. Number one, the business must have a healthy cash flow to finance credit sales. Number two, there's always the risk of non-payment. Now let's move over to the client. What are the disadvantages and the advantages of credit? Let's look at the advantages of credit. The client can buy a more expensive item and does not have to wait until more money is available. Secondly, the client can take advantages of sales when they are core. Cool. Disadvantages of credit for the client. Firstly, it may encourage some clients to spend more than they can afford. Secondly, the client pays more for goods because of the credit facilities. For example, interest rates. So grade nine learners, let's take a few seconds to discuss what are the typical things that people buy on credit. So now that we've got all the theory covered, now let's look at the actual accounting part. Let's see what the credit transaction will look like and how it will influence the accounting equation. So let's look at the first example. Let's go. Sold goods on credit to J Bond for 4,500 Rand. Cost price, 3,000 Rand. Issued invoice. Now let's look at the table behind me. So let's look at the assets. Debtors are a current asset to the business because they owe the business money, which they must pay back in the future. Debtors increased with a selling price of 4,500 Rand. The trading stock, which is also a current asset, decreases with a cost price because it is sold for 3,000 Rand, which means that it leaves the business so the assets are less. Now let's look at owner's equity. If the business sold the goods for 4,500 Rand, and the cost price is 3,000 Rand, the business made a profit of 1,500 Rand. The profit will increase the owner's equity. Let's look at the source document. Number one, the business will fill in a credit invoice in duplicate. Secondly, the original invoice and the goods will go to the customer. And lastly, the business will use the duplicate to record the transaction in the business books. Let's look at the journals. Debtor's journal, in short DJ, is used as the first entry for credit sales of the business. Now we use the debtor's journal only if the business sells its goods on credit. But we'll learn about this a bit later. Let's look at the second example. Received payment on account from J Bond for 3,800 Rand. Issued a receipt. When we receive an account, it means that the debtor has paid all or some of the money that they've owed us. So let's look at the table again. Firstly, let's look at the assets. As you know by now, debtors are a current asset to the business because they owe the business money, which they must pay back in the future. The debt of the debtors decreases with 3,800 Rand because they are paying off their debt. Current assets of the business decreases. The assets or the bank increases because the business receives money of 3,800 Rand. Let's look at the source document. Firstly, the business will fill in a receipt when a debtor pays in part to settle his or her account in full. The business issues an original receipt to the client and keeps the duplicate to record the transaction in the cash receipts journal or CRJ. Let's look at the journal. The cash receipts journal is the journal used to record all payments received by the business. This also includes the debtors that pay off their money. All right, grade nine learners, this brings the end of lesson one, term two. We were looking at debtors, and I know this is a mouthful, but we will be looking at this topic in more details in the following lessons. If you're still struggling, please watch these videos once again. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.